Hey there, I'm Tim Gray, and today we're gonna to talk about getting started in Lightroom. Lightroom Classic CC provides a great workflow foundation. You can organize your photos, optimize your photos, and share your photos in a variety of ways. But most important, first thing first, is getting organized. And part of that relates to understanding how Lightroom works. And so, for example, once you've installed Lightroom, you've got a default catalog created for you, you launch Lightroom, and it says, click the import button to begin. That is not where you should begin when it comes to Lightroom. Instead, I recommend before you start using Lightroom that you take a little bit of time to get to know Lightroom. To understand, for example, that Lightroom is using a catalog to keep track of the information about your photos. So when you update information, when you add keywords or star ratings, for example, that information by default is only stored within the Lightroom catalog. So it's very important that you take good care of your catalog. I recommend using just a single catalog to organize all of your photos, your entire photo library. Ideally, I also recommend having a single storage location for all of your images. For example, a single external hard drive. Of course, chances are, if you're just getting started with Lightroom, you're not just getting started with photography, and so you already have a number of photos on a hard drive, perhaps organized into folders, and you can actually import all of that into Lightroom. And that really is the first step in using Lightroom in your workflow, is bringing your existing library of photos into the Lightroom catalog so that you can manage from there. If you've got a little bit of a mess on the hard drive, maybe the folders aren't organized all that well, you might wanna take a little bit of time first to clean up the hard drive, rename some of the folders, adjust the folder structure. But once you've got a hard drive full of photos that you're ready to manage in Lightroom, you can actually import all of those images all at once. So I'll go ahead and get started here in Lightroom. I'm ready to import all of my existing photos. And so within the library module, the module picker is up at the top right, I'm gonna make sure that I'm in the library module. And down at the bottom left, at the bottom of the left panel, I will click the import button. That will bring up a dialogue where we can choose the source of photos that we want to import. In this case, I already have my photos organized into folders on an external hard drive, so I can import that entire hard drive all at once. So I'll make sure that that hard drive is selected, and then I get the rather alarming message in the center here indicating that no photos were found. Well, that's just because at the moment I'm not including subfolders in my import. And so after selecting the My Photos hard drive in this case, the source storage location for all of my photos, I'll go ahead and turn on the Include Subfolders checkbox. That will enable Lightroom to go scour the entire hard drive looking for any photos or videos that might be stored in a wide variety of folders. And you'll see that the thumbnails for all of those images start to populate the import dialog. Next, I wanna take a look up at the top center and choose the task that I want to perform. How do I want to import these images? I could copy the images either as a DNG or just copy them in their native file format, or I could move the images. But in this case, I don't want to do either of those things. I don't want to copy or move. I just want to keep the photos where they are on my external hard drive and add them to my Lightroom catalog. I can then take a look over on the right side and there's a few additional options which we'll actually address in the next step of our workflow because the same options will be available when I perform the next import. So for now, don't worry about those, keeping in mind that of course we might want to change some of the settings here based on what we're doing in the next step. So I'll go ahead and just click the import button down at the bottom right of the import dialog and now all of these photos are being added to my Lightroom catalog. In other words, my catalog can now manage those photos for me, essentially. It's important to keep in mind that now I am using Lightroom to manage my photos, so I wanna make sure that anything I do with my photos is done inside of Lightroom, or at least initiated inside of Lightroom. So if I wanna move photos around or rename folders, even send a photo over to Photoshop to perform some more advanced adjustments, I want to initiate that process inside of Lightroom. You'll also notice in this case, I'm getting a dialogue asking if I want to enable address lookup. And that's because some of the photos that I'm importing into my catalog were captured with a camera that has a built-in GPS receiver. So there are GPS coordinates included in metadata and I can actually have the location information pulled automatically for those images. 
essentially converting the GPS coordinates, which are just a bunch of numbers essentially, into a name, the city and country, for example, where the photos were captured. So I'll go ahead and enable that option. And now I've added all of these photos into Lightroom. I can see all of my existing folder structure. And that, by the way, is a very common question that I get from photographers. They put a lot of time and effort into defining a folder structure that works well for them, and they don't want to lose that. Well, you don't need to lose that at all because Lightroom will reflect the folder structure on your hard drive when you import photos. I'll go ahead and browse some of these images and you can see that all of the thumbnails are there, previews are being generated, any existing metadata that I had applied, such as keywords or star ratings, will be included now in the catalog as well. Of course, this just represents my current collection of photos and over time I'm going to capture new images and so I need to import those new photos into Lightroom as well. But there's a slightly different workflow involved because my photos will be on a media card that I used in my camera to store those photos and I want to now import from this card to my storage location, to the, in this case, external hard drive that I'm using for all of my photo storage. And so I'll go ahead and put my card into a card reader and insert that card reader into a USB port and I can actually import those photos into my Lightroom catalog and in the process copy them over to my external hard drive and perform a variety of other tasks as well. So once again I'll go down to the bottom of the left panel here in the library module and click the import button. That will bring up the import dialog and you'll notice that the source of photos in this case was selected automatically and that's because Lightroom recognized that there is a removable media device that contains photos. So it set that as the source. I could, of course, change the source as needed. Because this is a removable device, you'll see that there is an eject after import checkbox so that the device will be safely disconnected from the computer so that I don't need to go through the operating system to then remove the device. I can then turn my attention to the top center of the import dialog. And here, where I previously used the add option, I most certainly do not want to use add. In fact, the add option for importing for most photographers is something that you'll probably only ever do once because you're adding your existing library of photos, but then you're going to be copying photos in the future from a media card, for example. So in this case, theoretically, I want to move the photos from my media card to my external hard drive. In actual fact, I'm going to copy them so I have a little bit of a built-in backup as part of that process. So I'll just use the copy option. I could also convert the source files into Adobe DNG if I prefer, but I'll just copy the source raw images in this case. And then moving over toward the right column, I can take a look at the destination. And in this case, I want that destination to be that external hard drive that I'm using as my primary storage for all of my photos. In other words, I want to put my new photos over where all of my existing photos are. So I'll click the pop-up at the top right of the import dialog, and there's the desktop, there's the pictures folder or the movies folder. None of those is where I'm storing my photos, so I'm going to click other destination, and then I will choose the my photos hard drive that I'm using as the storage location for all of my images. I'll then go ahead and click the choose button, and then I can take a look at the various options available as part of this import process, keeping in mind that some of these are also available when we're adding images as opposed to copying. First off, I can build previews, in other words, proxy images, preview photos that I can use to browse my images even if my external hard drive is not currently connected to the computer. Generally speaking, I recommend using the standard option. These are full screen resolution previews that'll enable you to get a pretty good sense of all of your photos. If you tend to zoom in on just about every single photo, then you might want to use the one-to-one -one option, but I would say for most photographers, the standard option is best. You can also build smart previews, which primarily would be an option if you tend to work a lot with the source photos not available. Those smart previews are essentially DNG images that serve as a working copy, a local copy of the photos that you can use even when the hard drive is disconnected. I don't generally need that workflow capability and so I'll leave that build smart previews checkbox turned off. There's also an option here to don't import suspected duplicates. Let's say for example that you halfway filled up a media card, imported those photos into Lightroom, copying them as part of that process, put the card back in the camera, forgot to reformat it, and started capturing additional photos. 
With this checkbox turned on, you won't end up with any duplicates. Lightroom will recognize which photos have already been imported and not re-import, not create an additional copy of those images. And so I just recommend having this checkbox turned on for every import. Another checkbox that I highly recommend taking advantage of is the make a second copy to checkbox. In other words, while I'm copying the photos from my media card to my external hard drive, I'm going to make an additional copy to another storage location so that after the import, I'll have the photos in three places so I could even reformat the media card in my camera knowing that I still have those photos on two storage devices. So I'll turn on that checkbox. You can then click the link down below to specify the location. Here I've already designated the desktop and backup folder as the folder I'd like to use. So I'll go ahead and leave that as it is. I could also add these images to a collection if I'd like to by turning on the checkbox and choosing a collection. I could rename the photos. I could turn on the rename files checkbox and then choose a preset, essentially a template for that renaming. Perhaps I would use a custom text option with a sequence number, for example, so I could specify that custom text, maybe Palouse and a sequence number or whatever structure makes sense for me in terms of that file naming. I generally just leave the original source file names for most of my images, so I'll just turn off that rename files checkbox. I can also apply some changes to my images as part of the import process. I could apply a develop preset changing the appearance of all of my photos. So for example, maybe I prefer to convert all of my photos to black and white rather than color. I could apply a black and white preset during the import process and all of those images will be adjusted accordingly. Or I could simply apply, for example, profile based lens corrections and maybe some noise reduction to all of the photos during import. So if I've created a developed preset or if I find an existing preset that I like, I can apply that right here with the develop settings pop up. You can also create a metadata preset so that you can add some metadata to your photos during the import process. So for example, you could create a metadata preset that includes your contact and copyright information. So that information can be added to all of your photos right at the time they're being imported. Here I've already created a preset with my own name, of course. So I'll go ahead and choose that as the metadata preset that I want to apply. Down below that, you'll see that we can add keywords to these photos. Keep in mind that if I add keywords during import, I'm adding those same keywords to every single image that I'm importing. So I need to be somewhat vague, you might say, with those keywords. That also means these aren't going to be the most useful keywords because they're going to describe an entire photo shoot, for example, rather than individual photos. But I still think it's worthwhile to take just a moment to add some keywords. All of these photos, for example, were captured in the Palouse region of Eastern Washington State. So at the very least, I might add Palouse as a keyword. And if there were multiple keywords that I wanted to assign to these photos, I could separate each of those with a comma. Down below the keywords, you'll find the destination section, which might seem a little bit confusing because we had already described the destination that we want to use for these photos, the external hard drive in this case that I'm using to store all of those images. But that was just the hard drive. That was just the general location where I store all of my photos. Now I want to define a folder for these images. And so in the destination section down toward the bottom of the right panel here in the import dialog, I'll make sure that I have the into subfolder checkbox turned on. Then in the text field to the right, I can specify a name for this folder. So I'll just type Palouse 2018, for example, and that will create that folder as part of the import process. So on my external hard drive, I'm creating a new folder called Palouse 2018, and I'm copying all of these new photos into that folder. So with all of those options set down at the bottom of the right panel in the import dialog, I can click that import button. And now quite a few things are happening all at once. These images are being added to my Lightroom catalog. They're also being copied from the media card to my hard drive into a folder that I've specified. I might have renamed the photos. In this case, I did add some keywords to the photos. I'm making backup copies of the photos, adding some metadata. There's a variety of things being done. And to me, that's a very efficient process. It might not be as fast as using other software tools to download your photos, but now you're breaking up this workflow into multiple tasks rather than accomplishing so much with a single overall process. So importing photos into your catalog and accomplishing a lot of your other workflow tasks all at the same time. 
Once that import process is complete, I can of course go and browse those images and then start to think about the next stage of the workflow. I've actually done a fair bit to get my photos organized. I've put them all into a specific folder, for example, based on the trip that I was on when I captured these images. But I wanna take that a little bit of a step further. I do have some keywords, I've got that folder name, but I might want to identify my favorite images, at least as a basic starting point in my workflow. And for that, I tend to use star ratings. And I actually use star ratings in a way that's not necessarily as common, I think, as what most people do. And part of that is just based on the notion that I don't really need to assign a star rating to an image I'm never going to use. And so I actually take multiple approaches, multiple passes at my images to review them. The first time around, I'll simply identify images that I think are keepers. And so browsing the full size image here and using the film strip to navigate, I'll start with the very first image here. And I can use the arrow keys to navigate among my images and then use keyboard shortcuts for assigning star ratings as well. The number one on the keyboard will assign a one star rating, the number two, two stars, and so on. The number zero will remove the star rating. And the approach I take is to then just press the number one, assign one star to any image that I think is a keeper. So this one I'm not so interested in, nor that one. That one's interesting. I like the shadow against the hillside there. And I like this wide angle view with lots of sky up above. And so those images that I like, I simply press the number one on the keyboard to assign a one star rating. Now we've got some images of a crop duster here. And so I'll go through and see the images that I like the best, assigning a one star rating to those that I think I'm most likely to want to use. And I can continue this process, of course, going through all of the images that I've captured, that I've just imported into Lightroom, and identifying what are essentially my keepers, at least with this initial review, with that one star rating. And then later in my workflow, ideally after letting a little bit of time pass before I review the images again, so that I sort of separate the emotion from that process. I find that very often, right after capturing images, I think I've got like amazing photos that I'll want to share with everyone. A week later, I go back and look in those photos and eh, they're not quite as interesting as they were. I still have some favorites, some photos that I really like, but a lot of the photos that I assigned a one star rating to on further analysis, after letting a little bit of time pass, I might not be as fond of. And so I'll go back through and look at my one star rated photos and I can determine whether or not I think they really warrant that one star. In some cases, I might actually remove a star rating from a photo, but also in other cases, I might find that I want to upgrade a star rating. And so this photo, for example, with a crop duster approaching the camera, I think it's pretty interesting. So I might wanna upgrade that to a two star rating. After some more time, after I've had a chance to work in the develop module with my photos to optimize their appearance, I might upgrade a favorite photo to a three star rating. So in general, I think of a one star as an initial keeper, a photo that I think I might like to work with. Two stars generally to me represents best photos from a particular photo shoot. Three stars represents best photos overall, some that have the potential to get into my portfolio. And then four star rated images are those that I think are really among my best photos with five stars representing my portfolio pieces, which by definition ought to be a relatively small percentage of my overall photo library. So that's just the approach that I tend to take when assigning star ratings. The key is not that I think you should necessarily use that approach, but rather that you should be thoughtful about how you're using these tools in your workflow to best meet your needs as a photographer. So that gives you a sense of how things should start off with Lightroom, adding all of your existing photos, importing new captures, and then assigning some star ratings to define your favorite photos. Of course, there's more that you're going to want to do. Maybe assign some keywords, update other metadata values, certainly optimize some of your favorite photos in the develop module, and certainly share some of your best photos with others. But hopefully that helps you to get a good sense of how you can make a strong start managing your workflow in Lightroom Classic CC.